I'm an assistant professor at University of Florida. This is based on my PhD thesis. And the topic I'd like to discuss today is how to move virtual object in mixed reality. As you may all know, Oculus recently released hand tracking SDK. As opposed to the handheld controllers, integrating hand tracking eliminates the need for carrying additional devices, making our hands more appealing input for MR and VR headsets. And many people believe using one's hand can be a natural and intuitive way to interact with 3D object. But the question remains here. Then what kind of hand gesture would be natural and intuitive? Imagine you are using your hand to move the chair that is far away from you. How would you move this chair using your hand? What kind of gesture do you think you are going to use? When I asked this question to 40 of my students, about 20% of them said they are going to use a pointing gesture, about 10% said they are going to use a grabbing gesture, and some students said they are going to use both hands. The thing is, our hands are capable of so many different gestures. So the idea of natural and intuitive interaction may really vary by different individuals. Gesture interaction has been a popular research topic in 3D UI research. Prior work has been looking into finger pointing and how can we detect the finger pointing in more accurate way or how we can increase the accuracy of selecting an object by combining finger pointing with eye gaze or hat position. Studies also look at the different interaction styles and compare those different interaction styles. Although these studies provide valuable insight into understanding gesture interaction, most of the prior work are heavily geared toward the pattern recognition and measure accuracy and efficiency. The question of what would be the most intuitive way to interact with a 3D object in VR has been relatively less explored and remains still as an open question. To this end, in our study, we compare three different interaction styles. One that uses a gaze cursor and using a pinch gesture to move the object and the other one where user can just directly touch in and grabbing it. And third, where the miniature object appears and user can manipulate the miniature object. We decided to choose these three different interactions based on its popularity and relative advantage and disadvantage each interaction provides. For example, gaze and pinch interaction is one of the most popularly used interaction for mixed reality headsets. And the clear advantage this provides is that it enables users to manipulate the remote object. And it, it also deals with a limited field of view issue. However, because it does not really allow users to directly interact with the object, it may feel less natural and less intuitive. Compared to this, touch and grab interaction, which is another popular interaction for VR, allow users to direct, like, directly interact with the object. However, you cannot really select or manipulate the object that's beyond your arm's length. Where do miniature address these two issues? As it allows users to directly manipulate the object and interact with the remote object. There are other interactions such as go, -go technique or other ray casting technique that has a similar feature. However, we decide to focus on the word in miniature based on its popularity in architecture VR apps. The main research question we try to address here is the first, discoverability, meaning that how user can figure interaction out without having instruction. We also measure the perceived level of naturalism and usability. And we also look at the accuracy and efficiency of each interaction styles. Method. For a device setup, we use Oculus Rift and Jet Mini camera and leap motion. The reason we use Jet Mini camera instead of using HoloLens is because the HoloLens provide a limited field of view. And because our main product was furniture items such as big chair and large table, the Jet Mini that provided a larger field of view was more appropriate for our study. This is the video that shows the gaze and inch interaction. User could select the item using a gaze cursor, which actually used the head position and use the pinch gesture to move the object. 
And touch grab interaction, user can just directly touch in and grabbing it. And word in miniature, user were supposed to detect the, I mean, scan the environment first and select the miniature object and could move the large scale item that moves along with it. In our user study, we recruited 21 participants. Because we were interested in the preferences among these three different interactions, we used the within subject study design. We asked them to experience three different interaction and the order of these interactions was randomized in order to minimize the order effect. We asked them to complete three different interactions, actually three different tasks. The first task is selecting the menu and second task is move the chair into the designated area. Because the focus here was discoverability, we didn't give them any instruction. They had to figure out how to select and move the item by themselves. Then after we gave them instruction how to move each interaction design, we tried to measure accuracy and efficiency by giving them a more complicated task. We asked them to arrange the chair and table so that each chairs are perpendicular to each other. And after this, we gave them a survey questionnaire that asked about usability and perceived level of naturalism and enjoyment. This process was repeated for second interaction and third interaction. And at the end, we had a follow-up interview. Entire session was video recorded because what we were interested in was the gesture people are using. Result. When it comes to discoverability, the gaze and pinch interaction took the most time for them to figure this out without instruction. After we gave them instruction, we measure accuracy by measuring the total time it took to finish the task. And we measure accuracy by looking at the angular differences. Because word of miniature compared to other two where users are supposed to interact with the actual scale item, because word of miniature provide a top view, it was easier for user to understand the configuration and arrangement of the furniture. So this was more accurate and this took much less time compared to, to other interaction. And when it comes to usability, gaze and pinch interaction was, took much more effort than the other two. And people found this was more frustrating than touch and grab and word and miniature interaction. The main focus of our study is the gesture. What kind of gesture people think would be more intuitive. This video illustrates the gesture participants try to use to select the menu. As you can see here, the most frequently used gesture was finger pointing. They are trying to point the menu with index finger. And because our study was done with a novice this MR user, they didn't really get the idea of the gaze cursor. In fact, all of our participants were trying to use the finger pointing to select the menu. Basically, you point it with the index finger and try to push it. When it comes to moving the object, they are supposed to use either use a gaze and pinch interaction where you are using a gaze to select an item and hold a pinch gesture or just walk to the object and grabbing it, grabbing it with a grabbing gesture. But this is the participant's responses. For the table, a lot of them are trying to use a both hands to try to lift the table. Another frequent gesture, the gesture that was frequently used by the respondents were pushing. Many of them are trying to push the chair or push the table. And you can feel their frustration here. To summarize, the air tap gesture was less frequently used compared to the finger pointing gesture. In fact, all of the participants are trying to use the finger pointing when they saw the menu. And the grabbing gesture was less frequently used to move the chair. The most frequently used gesture for moving a chair was lifting it with both hands. 
And the grabbing chair, a grabbing gesture was less, less frequently used when it comes to the table because table is a much larger item than chair. 80-80% of participants are trying to lift it, lift the large table with their both hands. In the follow-up interview, one of the most frequently mentioned theme was natural interaction. One respondent said, even if it's not real, you think it's a furniture. It feels like it should be heavy and I should be using both hands. Another participant said, you don't really grab the table. That's not how you move the table in the real world. When you see a table like this, you try to lift it. Besides this, another topic that was frequently mentioned was dynamic interaction. I hope there are more you can do, like you can push, pull, and lift, basically do everything that you would do with a real object in the real world. Where one participant mentioned that he wants to combine all these features somehow, and if there is an option to choose, that would be great. This interview result provided us three different design implications. First, natural interaction is dynamic and complex. A lot of designers are strive to come up with a one single simple interaction that can work across many interfaces, such as a gaze click, using a gaze as a mouse cursor and air tap gesture as a clicking. Although this interaction can be simple and easy to implement, the way we interact with a real object is more complex and dynamic as for its nature. And natural interaction is more direct and physical, meaning that the object that is far away from the user, user much prefer to use an interaction where they can manipulate those directly compared to the cases where they have to use a mid-air gesture. Our study also point out the critical roles of visual cues and affordance. Although these are heavily discussed topic in HCI and X3D UI research, not many VR application really applies the concept of visual affordance into the designing of 3D UI. One possible solution to create more natural interaction is combining more realistic physics systems, such as creating more realistic colliders. However, these are comp computationally heavy and these are not currently available or well developed for Unity 3D or Unreal Game Engine. Because my home department is digital art and science, what I'm currently looking at is designing the visual guidance. Compared to the cases in where you will highlight the entire object, highlighting only interactable component or providing some gesture guideline, like this is a gesture you are supposed to do, or providing other visual clues with an arrow or movement boxes. This can be a great visual guidance that lets they let the user know about the possible interaction. It is important to point out the limitation of this study as well, because the main focus of our study was discoverability. We didn't really look at how users actually learn this interaction and how this could be different once they have enough time to train themselves. The result of our study can be quite different once users have enough time to understand all these different features. It is also important to understand the limitation of the world of miniature interaction as well because world of miniature interaction may not really work well for the dense environment. In order to incorporate this world of miniature interaction into VR application, we should consider other different interactions such as zoom in or zoom out or using array casting to enable user to select tiny object in a dense environment as well. The future study could under try to understand how can it better incorporate this world of miniature interaction into VR architecture or VR interior design application. 3D interaction is in fact is very complicated. Our hands are capable of doing so many different gestures and there are many possible interactions we can explore, rotating, scaling, and translating, and selecting the menu and selecting the tiny object in a dense environment. Our study can be the first step toward understanding what be more intuitive and natural way to move the object in a room size environment. 